Hello viewers, a very good afternoon. Welcome to our Facebook live session. And today we are going to discuss the topic acute kidney injury and overview. So today we have Dr. P. S. Homsizer, who is our senior consultant at Apollo Hospital Vishakhapatnam, with 10 years of experience in clinical nephrology and kidney transplantation. We all know that we are passing through a very tough situation, that is COVID-19. Experts are believing that uh, with delaying these emergency health issues due to the fear of coming in contact with the coronavirus. But all of us not to be afraid of seeking any medical emergency. If someone needs any medical procedure, our surgical and medical staff are ready to help. So without any delay, let's start our topic that is acute kidney injury. So doctor, welcome to our Facebook live session. Thank you. Good afternoon viewers, I am Dr. Vamsridhar and I am an nephrologist at Apollo Hospital. Uh, I am a consultant nephrologist at Apollo Hospital, Arimava, Vishakhapatnam. Today, I am going to discuss few points about acute kidney injury. So most of you must have heard about chronic kidney disease, but very few must have like come across this term acute kidney injury. So I want to give some awareness regarding that. We will take this session as a Q&A session and in between you can also hop in if required so that it's better uh, understood if we take this format, question and answers format. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Doctor, like uh, as you told me, you cured about like, chronic kidney disease routinely, but what is acute kidney injury? Kidney disease is essentially three types, I would say. The first one is chronic kidney disease. As I have said earlier, most of you must have heard about this. Briefly, what does CKD mean? Chronic kidney disease. That means any kidney problem, any kidney disease which lasts more than three months duration and of irreversible nature. See, these two points are important. Irreversible nature and lasting more than three months. Then we label them as chronic kidney disease. On the other hand, the second type is acute kidney injury, which is our topic today. Acute, as the name indicates, that means it happens in a sudden way. That means kidney dysfunction, like kidney damage, which occur over few hours to few days duration. Suddenly, we call it as acute kidney injury. And the important part regarding this definition of acute kidney injury is there is reversibility to this. That means acute kidney injuries, if treated properly, they will recover. At least most of the acute kidney injuries will recover. And as I have said earlier, the third type of kidney damage is acute on chronic kidney disease. The first one, as I said, it's CKD. Second one, acute kidney injury. Third one, acute on CKD. So what does this mean? What is acute on CKD? Here, in this case, we have a patient of CKD, chronic kidney disease. That means there is some underlying kidney problem, which is long lasting. So added to that, due to whatever reason, it might be infection or it might be dehydration or it might be some medicines. So due to whatever reason, if there is a sudden increase in creatinine or there is a new damage over underlying chronic kidney disease, this we can label it as acute on CKD. So in such a case, the acute component if treated properly will be improved. Whereas the CKD part will be there. So these are the three types of kidney injuries. Sir, coming to the next question, is it common? Yes. So you might get it out. So why are we, why are we discussing this acute kidney injury? Is it relevant? Is it common? Obviously, it's common, otherwise I wouldn't have discussed with you. So, how common is this, Doctor? That's your next question, obviously, right? See, the statistics worldwide say, in a hospitalized patient, suppose, uh, I'm giving, giving an example so that you understand it better. 100 patients are there as an inpatients. So, out of that, in general wards and rooms and all, it is estimated that 10% of them will have some element of acute kidney injury. That's the minimum number, 10%. On the other hand, 
take for example in intensive care unit settings that means in icu in icu there is 30% incidence of acute kidney injury that means out of every 10 persons in icu at least three will have some element of kidney damage which is acute and reversible so it's very important and it's very common we have to address this issue as i said 10% in hospital ward patients and 30% in icu patients so which age group is this uh, patient is acute kidney injury affected yeah that's a good question because most of us even myself before joining mens i used to think okay children are not affected by acute kidney injury or for that matter even ckd it's only a disease of elderly or old people no in fact that's a wrong concept kidney injury can happen at any age group be it newborn or be it an 80 years old gentleman or lady so it encompasses the kidney injury in, involves can involve any of the age group recently couple of days i got a call just newborn like two days old baby due to some problem the kidneys are shut down they are not working so that newborn needs peritoneal dialysis so it's not uncommon even in children newborn also kidney disease can occur obviously the causes vary depending on the age group common causes will differ thank you doctor uh, should we worry about acute kidney injury Uh, that's a good question okay you might ask doctor you are saying this is acute kidney injury this is the definition it is common but should we be frightened about or is it something like just common cold can we ignore it the answer is yes it's an emphatic yes we should be worried about acute kidney injury i will tell you why because acute kidney injury means even mild kidney injury also mild elevation in creatinine also we label it as acute kidney injury so some people may feel that okay we can ignore that you are wrong because whatever data we have worldwide whatever studies from different countries of the world they tell us that any patient who is admitted in hospital for whatever reason suppose if he develops kidney injury kidney damage the effect of the kidney damage on the recovery will be delayed that means they del- they will recover from their primary illness in a delayed manner the hospital length of the stay will increase because of kidney injury not only that the morbidity will increase morbidity means in a common person's language the suffering the patient suffering will increase so he should stay in the hospital for a long period and the morbidity will increase and most important of all the mortality mortality means the death rate so any person who develops kidney injury the death rate will increase for example suppose a patient who is admitted with some infection whatever infection it might be gastroenteritis or it may be urinary infection or it may be lung infection suppose if he develops if he or she develops kidney injury the chance of his dying is on the higher side suppose if the kidney injury is severe that means suppose you take for example serum creatinine normal creatinine is less than 1.3 anything above that is on the higher side that indicates that there is an acute kidney injury for example take a person who has creatinine of 2 on the other hand take a person who has creatinine of 5 or next person 8 so as the severity of kidney injury increases the death rate also increases to put that into perspective a person who is in icu for example a person a patient who is in icu with severe infection and kidney failure requiring dialysis requiring dialysis means it's a severe form of kidney injury most severe form the chance of his dying will be on the side of 60 to 70% i am not telling this to frighten you i am just telling this to sensitize you to tell you so that you can recognize the importance of the kidney injury so as i said the length of the stay increases the suffering or morbidity increases and the mortality death rate increases this all applies not only to the hospital like hospital duration even after the patient is discharged subsequently also these patients who have recovered from acute kidney injury they are more likely to have repeated injuries repeated acute kidney injury 
acute kidney injury and also the long term mortality also is on the higher side because of this acute kidney injury. I think you must have understood the importance and significance of this acute kidney injury. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, Doctor, one of our audience, uh, Jay Prakash Reddy, is asking the role of Ayurvedic drugs in kidney stones. Some say they just elim eliminate stones through urine after long treatment. Do you encourage them? Good afternoon, Mr. Jay Prakash Reddy. Yeah, your question is, is there any role of Ayurvedic medicine in treating kidney stones? Uh, see, first of all, there is a scientific approach to the kidney stone. It might be, we first we should see and diagnose what is the type of kidney stone? Is it calcium oxalate stone, calcium phosphate, uric acid or there are some other causes? So depending on the type of kidney stone, the treatment is directed according to the uh, final diagnosis. Ayurvedic medicines, in fact, we don't know what is the composition of those things and some Ayurvedic medicines do contain heavy metals which are harmful to the kidney. So, in general, we do not advise Ayurvedic treatment, but obviously, everyone is entitled to have their own opinion. So, from my side, as an allopathic doctor, we generally do not encourage Ayurvedic treatment. Thank you, doctor. Another viewer, Gosh Basha, is asking, Sir, what is the parameter to say it is CKD or AKI? Hello, Mr. Lewis. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, probably you must have missed the first two to three minutes of our discussion. Again, I'll tell it for you. The time duration of the kidney damage that tells us whether it is acute kidney injury or CK. As I have said earlier, any kidney disease which extends and which stays beyond three months of duration is called chronic kidney disease. Whereas acute kidney injury is a temporary phenomenon and it is a reversible phenomenon. So it lasts, it doesn't last for so many months. It will improve. Usual time of recovery for acute kidney injury is one week to three weeks. That's the usual time of and as expected exceptions do occur, some people might take longer. But it is reversible by definition, acute kidney injury. I think I must I cleared your doubt. Thank you, Doctor. Again, Chai Prakash Reddy is asking, Sir, what is the role of Ayurveda in kidney stones? Experts give different levels. Uh, that's a good question, Mr. Jim Prakash, because there is no single number to denote normal creatinine. It all depends on the age of the patient, it depends on the body weight, in other words, the muscle mass of the person. So there are so many factors. For example, a creatinine of 1.2, 1.3. It can be normal or abnormal also. As I said, depends on the other factors. Imagine a young, young around 30, 35 years person, male person with heavily built muscles. He's a bodybuilder. For him, serum creatinine 1.3 is absolutely normal because the source of creatinine in our body is muscle. So obviously, if the muscle mass is more, it will produce a lot of creatinine. His kidneys were perf will be per perfectly functioning. They will excrete creatinine. But because of the increased amount of creatinine which is produced, the blood level will be on the higher side. So for a Hulk, you say, for Hulk, creatinine 1.3, 1.4 is normal. At the same time, take a case of elderly person, elderly lady, around some 60, 65, with a lean body weight, with not a not lot of muscle mass. For her creatinine 1.3, it's on the higher side. So we should, it depends. Only creatinine alone it doesn't give the full idea. We take all other factors into consideration. Coming to our next question, uh, the audience, uh, Sandeep is asking, what is the survival rate of AKA? Uh, here also, uh, Mr. Sandeep, AKA is a basket. Okay. It, it contains a lot of diagnosis. So, AKA is a syndrome, acute kidney injury. So, we have to go into what is the cause of acute kidney injury. So, the survival also depends on the cause of acute kidney injury and also depends on the severity of the underlying condition which causes acute kidney injury. So, as I said, 
there is one form of acute kidney injury we call it as uh, for example patient got dehydrated he went and had some food outside or he went to a party and you know enjoyed some biryani or chicken or whatever it is okay if we get some food poisoning and diarrhea so he gets dehydration and severe dehydration can lead to increase in creatinine in other words severe dehydration can cause some element of kidney injury acute kidney injury if they are identified promptly and if they come to the hospital on time and if we rehydrate them that means we give iv fluids so whatever dehydration occurred has been corrected so in early stages that's completely reversible in fact within a day or two they can be discharged so in such case it will be 100% recovery having said that the same person who got dehydration he delays coming to the hospital okay so he will suppose he comes to hospital after some 5 to 7 days so by that time his bp has dropped down imagine such a situation his bp has dropped down and the kidney injury has progressed and creatinine reached some 6 or 7 and his urine output has dropped here if you take the cause of kidney injury is the same is dehydration but the severity is different the earlier one is mild and he has come to the hospital at an early stage the second situation he came to the hospital when this kidney injury became very severe so in such a case they might need few sessions of dialysis and there is a good chance of recovery but it will take some time and any person who lands up with a very severe kidney injury requiring dialysis around there is a chance that 10 to 15% of them may not recover normal kidney function this is very important early stage you identify your treat the responder in the later stages if all other factors are good like if the whatever the primary cause has led to kidney injury improves even after that some 10 to 15 person may not recover normal period so the, i think you got the gist of it on the other hand take a person who is in icu he is in sepsis multi organ failure okay they might be on ventilator they might be on multiple bp increasing medicines we call them as inotropes in such a case the mortality risk that means that the threat will be anywhere between 50 to 70 percent for a patient of kidney injury requiring dialysis so here it's much higher the death rate is much higher so as i said only by aka we cannot conclude how whether they will recover or not we will look into so many factors thank you doctor uh, again kaushi is asking uh, is hemofiltration or hemodialysis which is better uh i think mr dos you are well aware and you are well <laughs> well read i believe that's a good question usually routinely we don't face it from the common public it also depends on the type of kidney injury and how severe is the patient see for a patient who is maintaining good blood pressure but he has kidney failure which requires dialysis so for them even hemodialysis gives good results on the other hand take a person in icu take a person who is sickest of the sick patient and whose bp is on the borderline okay bp let like, us suppose around 80 systolic 80 to 90 and all in such persons hemodialysis they may not tolerate sometimes so in them we do a procedure called crrt continuous renal replacement therapy and one of the options crrt is hemofiltration hemofiltration hemodiafiltration these are the different options so in patients who are not stable with regard to their blood pressure they are borderline patients in such we do prefer hemodiafiltration as in other words we do crrt they are likely to tolerate it in a better way when compared to hemodialysis thank you doctor uh, another viewer pyari mohan naik is asking I have a problem of sweating from palm and feet while working and while sleeping. It will automatically stop. Ah, uh, stop, Yari. Uh, uh, I can't straightforward like even answer straightforwardly to that because I need your complete medical details whether you are diabetic or not, hypertensive, and usually kidney failure patients do not present with such a symptom. Uh, so some people even without having any disease they sweat a lot as you said some might while working 
and some people do give a still like while eating they get sweating in all their face so we do routine investigations in them what are their blood sugars what is their bp hemoglobin everything if everything is okay and if you are physically healthy then we can ignore it i think i suggest you better consult a physician for that thank you doctor uh, like we we'll go to our next question that is is there any role of antibodies leading to atr antibiotics are okay instead of yeah there are some antibiotics which may lead to atr okay see any medicine as good and bad to it okay so as a doctor whenever you prescribe any medicine for any patient we always balance those risk factors is the good greater than bad or is the bad greater than good and how likely any given patient or person is going to tolerate that so and depending on the indication of the antibiotic also why are we giving antibiotics what is the primary infection so depending on that we give and as you said there are some antibiotics for example like amino glycosides polystyrene there are some classes which if given for a long duration in certain people like it's not 100% in few people they may lead to acute kidney injury so what as a doctor will do is whenever we are prescribing any antibiotics which is likely to have side effects on the kidney we do monitor kidney function in them on a periodic basis and at the earliest sign of kidney damage we will stop those antibiotics or reduce the doses or reduce the doses or switch to some other antibiotics and uh, since the situation is come i strongly advise all of you not to use indiscriminately any antibiotics or for that matter painkillers if you get any problem don't directly go to medical shop and buy all those things because if you get the side effects and all it will be problematic always consult a doctor thank you doctor uh, another viewer sanjeev saman is asking is stent cause kidney problem Yeah, I get the question, Mr. Sanjeev. Can statins cause kidney problem? Uh, very rarely, and that too on an indirect basis. How I tell? Directly, in fact, statins are a very good group of medicines. They give you that to reduce, you know, for patients who are at high cardiac risk or in persons who had stroke. Stroke in the sense paralysis. So in such patients, if for people with high cholesterol, statins are found to be beneficial in such patients they do re reduce the recurrent cardiac events and strokes and in some are particularly predisposed this very rare they develop a sort of muscle injury which we call it as rhabdomyolysis due to statins and in such a situation if it is severe enough it may lead to acute kidney injury but that is very rare so you need not be worried about that any doctor who prescribes statins and again during follow ups also we do enquire about these muscle complaints do you have any muscle pain and all so we'll keep a tab on that thank you doctor another viewer pudna chandra rao is asking please throw light on pain killers and kidney diseases yeah good afternoon mr pudna chandra rao it's a very important and very relevant question which you have asked because we do see in our day to day practice pain killers are the drugs it's the most common causative drugs of kidney injury in our community suppose i get some knee pain i go to the doctor okay he will prescribe pain killers for a limited amount of time for 3 days or 5 days and not but most of and what do we see is our patients even after completing the course they don't go for the review with the doctor and they'll go to the medical shop and they will use the same course they will repeat those antibiotics again and again and again you would be surprised to know there are so many patients who come to us who have been on painkillers for 2 years 3 years 4 years and now their kidneys are gone so once it reaches beyond a certain stage it will lead to irreversible kidney disease so certain group of painkillers like diclofenac ibuprofen silicoxy etoric oxy and all some we call them as nsh non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs so that particular class can cause kidney injury so generally we 
don't prescribe them as an nephrologist. Suppose if person who is having severe pain and all also, they should use it for the minimum possible duration and they should not continue indefinitely. Certain painkillers, they don't harm the kidneys. Usually paracetamol is okay, tramadol. So some other kidney safe painkillers are there which can be prescribed if required for a patient who is at high risk of getting kidney problems. Don't indiscriminately use painkillers. That's my bottom line. Thank you, doctor. Uh, coming to our like uh, regular questions. So, how does you detect acute kidney injury? Okay. So, so far we have discussed about what is acute kidney injury, how common is it, which age group does it affect. So, next question: How do we detect acute kidney injury? Are there any symptoms, signs, or only through tests? Okay. So, in a person who is admitted in hospital, we routinely do kidney function tests for everyone, like hemoglobin, total counts, platelets, as we do routinely. We do urine routine examination and we do test blood like tests, certain blood like tests. So, common tests which are used to diagnose kidney injury here in blood are blood urea and serum creatinine. So, in fact, we have discussed at length about the serum creatinine and implications. So, if these values are on the higher side, that indicates, okay, there is something wrong with your kidney. So, then we will go deeper into that. So, apart from these tests, we do check serum electrolytes and urine examination. See, some patients will have protein leak in urine. Some patients have pus cells or red blood cells which are leaking into the urine. So even that indicates, sorry, okay, there is something going on with the kidney, it's not normal. So we do go deep into that. So common tests which are used to detect acute kidney injury are blood urea, serum creatinine, and urine routine examination. So apart from this, we do see what is the urine output of the patient. Okay, so as most of us know, if the urine output comes down, that indicates, okay, Kidney is not filtering enough, so there is damage to the kidney. But on, uh, remember, I am telling an important point. In all patients of acute kidney injury, urine, out, urine output need not be reduced. Okay, get it? So, only in 50% of the patients, suppose for example, take 100 people of acute kidney injury out there. Out of them, in only 50 of them, urine output will come down. In other 50, it will be normal. So that means that person is passing urine. That means he is having good quantity of urine, but the quality of urine is not there. In other words, the waste products which should be excreted into urine, this creatinine, urea and other molecules, they are not being pushed into urine. So 50% of the cases will have normal urine output, even though they have acute kidney injury. So we will monitor with all these parameters for all hospital patients. Thank you, doctor. Another viewer, Suresh is asking, Sir, thank you, sir, for your nice information about kidney disease. I would like to know at what age kidney function will decrease. Yeah, Mr. Suresh, as with other organs, as with anything else in our body, as age advances, the reserve capacity of our organs will come down. See, generally above 40, from 5th decade onwards, for each decade, you know, kidney function goes down by approximately 10%. Creatinine might be normal. Kidney is such an organ which has a good result. So, in early stages, creatinine, even though creatinine is normal, kidney function may go down. So, above 40, for each decade, there is a 10% decline in kidney function. That we take it as normal age related kidney problem anything beyond that we should see okay is there some disease then we will evaluate thank you doctor uh, doctor another view sanjeev is asking are anemia and higher creatine correlated mr sanjeev yes you are right anemia and higher creatine are related especially in patients of chronic kidney disease because Kidney is such an organ. Apart from excretory function, see, it should excrete all our waste products which are being formed in the body on day-to-day -day basis. Apart from that, yeah, it has many more important functions, one of which is formation of blood. 
okay kidney secretes a hormone which is called erythropoietin so whenever any person of kidney damage the erythropoietin levels will come down thereby leading to reduced hemoglobin formation so that means anemia so in a person of ckd and anemia we do supplement this erythropoietin for example for analogy diabetes who take insulin why because the insulin levels are low in their body leading to diabetes similarly in kidney problem and anemia in ckd we do give a hormone injections called erythropoietin to pick up the hemoglobin Thank you, Doctor. Uh, the viewer Pyari Mohan Naik is asking: So, what are the tests I have to do, and where? Give some suggestion about it. I don't have diabetic or BP. When I wake up, sweating starts from palm and feet, not from any part of the body. But while sleeping, it is automatically stopped. Uh, Mr. Pyari Mohan, as I suggested earlier, it's better you consult a physician. because they will do a thorough physical examination also and they will see is there any other problem associated so apart from bp and diabetes they will if necessary they will do few other tests and they will guide you thank you and we have like a apollo virtual consultation as well like that is apollo 24 into 7 and if you want to book any appointment of a physician then we have a website called www.askapollo.com where you can find A physician, uh, and you can uh, do your follow-up treatment over the virtual consultation form. Thank you. Uh, so our next question is, sir, uh, what are the common causes of acute kidney injury? Yeah. So now, as we know how to diagnose this acute kidney injury and how important it is, let's come to the causes. Few of which are already discussed, like for example, painkillers and dehydration. Also, I have like. discussed uh, five minutes back so i will talk about common causes first obviously because they are more relevant in community we see any sort of dehydration it might be due to reduced water intake see especially now this is summer as you know our temperatures are like soaring pretty high so for people who do go out on a regular basis for their job or for anything else if they don't stay hydrated that means if we don't drink good amounts of water in summer we will get prone for dehydration okay because the water evaporates from our body there are insensible losses we do sweat a lot so we do develop dehydration apart from that due to whatever disease if anybody develops a lot of vomiting and loose motions and if they are not replaced the fluid losses are not replaced they will go into dehydration so any sort of dehydration is one of the common cause of kidney injury what happens the kidney blood flow reduces in dehydration it leads to kidney damage so apart from this the second common cause is infections infections any infection beyond a certain degree of severity is likely to damage the kidney for example take our tropical problems tropical in the sense which our developing countries face for example malaria dengue okay these are the common infections malaria can involve the kidney dengue infection also can involve the kidney apart from this other infections like pneumonia that means infection involving the lungs urinary tract infection infection involving the urinary tract and kidneys intra abdominal infection other infections any gallbladder related infections these are the common infections which can lead to kidney injury so i have discussed about dehydration i have discussed about infections the third common cause of kidney injuries drugs in other words medicines painkillers i have discussed at length i am not going to repeat that so painkillers is one of the common drug and as some gentlemen have already pointed out some antibiotics can cause kidney injury and sometimes heavy metals drugs which contain heavy metals like some ayurvedic and all they may cause i am not saying all ayurvedic medicines are bad few might cause we have seen cases so uh, these are the common drugs which can cause kidney injury so apart from this there are certain problems we call it as autoimmune problems that means normally when we get some infections our body will produce auto antibodies which should fight against the infection which will save us 
but in some persons due to some reasons known and unknown some genetic reasons some unknown reasons their autobodies their antibodies will go and damage their own organs we call it as autoimmune disease for example rheumatoid arthritis sle systemic lupus erythematosus so some immune disorders also can cause kidney injury apart from this there are some group of disorders which are called glomerulonephritis which can cause kidney injury apart from this post i mean uh, any obstruction to the urinary tract what happens for example in males who are above 60 and all prostate enlargement is common so in some of them prostate becomes very huge it exactly it sit it is located below the urinary bladder in the way where urine passes so if it gets enlarged it can cause compression on the urethra so that means the pathway to the urine outlet is blocked in we call it as urinary tract obstruction uh, other examples are stones kidney stones if they slip downwards into the tube ureter if it occurs on the both sides it can cause obstruction so any obstruction also can cause kidney injury so we have to identify we will approach them systematically once they are admitted we will we will identify the cause and then we will treat it so these are the common causes of kidney injury apart from this there are other rare causes also but for common public this should suffice thank you doctor what are the risk factors of acute kidney injury yes risk factors for example for heart attack there are certain risk factors diabetes hypertension smoking or alcohol similarly for stroke there are some risk factors likely uh, in a similar way for kidney injury also there are certain risk factors like advanced age elderly people because as we have discussed earlier as age increases normally age related decline in kidney function occurs the vice periye kodi vice tho paatu kuda kidney anadi functioning tappatundi so elderly age above 50 above 60 that's an important risk factor diabetes second one third one hypertension that means high bp fourth one any person who is taking pain killers fifth one as i have said earlier people who already have autoimmune problems so these are the common risk factors and people who are dehydrated okay so in a person who has this background like who is a diabetic person suppose they are taking some diuretics for for uh, controlling their bp so they are dehydrated in them if they take any other drug or if they land up in any infections they are more prone to get kidney injury acute kidney injury so elderly person diabetes hypertension in a person who is taking some nephrotoxin drugs that means kidney drugs which cause side effects on the kidney in such person in a person who has autoimmune diseases these are the common group of patients who are at risk of getting kidney injury and any person who develops severe infection who comes to the hospital at a very late stage after developing infection they use over the counter medicines so if the person who lands up in a severe infection which leads to low bp that also can cause kidney damage and in some people who undergo ct scans and all we call it as contrast and hand ct scan we is in some conditions they require some injections before getting ct scan done so contrast in some people can lead to kidney problem so these are the particular sectors of people who are likely to get kidney problems thank you doctor uh, any preventive measures of acute kidney injury yes the first step in preventing kidney injury is good lifestyle okay what i mean by good lifestyle you should take natural like a lot of fruits vegetables this is for a person normal person i'm telling you not a person with kidney problem okay and they should drink good amounts of water as i said especially during the summer months now we should try to take at least 3 to 4 liters fluids water per day so that we stay hydrated we don't get the infection so this is one preventive measure suppose if we get some infections as i said some diarrhea and all we should take ors or water or butter milk barley whatever so we should avoid dehydration the other thing we should not use any pain killers or for a long period of time we should use them for the shortest possible time possible okay 
So we are essentially reducing the risk factors of the kidney. So these are the ways by which we can prevent. And if we do develop any symptoms, like some common symptoms of kidney damage are edema, that means swelling of the feet or swelling of our face. Second thing is any abnormalities with regard to the urine output. Some people, may, they might have low urine output. Some people may pass lots of urine, especially in the night. We call it as nocturia. So even passing urine for an increased number of times, some people do get up five to six times a night to pass urine. So in some diseases, some kidney diseases, the early symptom is nocturia. So even then we have to get our kidney checked or any unexplained breathlessness, unexplained loss of appetite. These are some of the common symptoms apart from swelling of the feet and urinary problems. So if we get any of these complaints, we should get kidney tests on a better layer, better early than late. Thank you, doctor. Another viewer, Sanjeev, is asking, sir, AKD is often developed silently. Are there any symptoms to be aware of? I was denied a dye injection radiology diagnostic test for 1.3 creatine. Should I be cautious? I am 42 years and 80 kg. kgs and taking donut PT. Yeah, Mr. Sanji. Uh, just now as I have discussed the, some of the common symptoms of kidney injury. The second thing regarding a specific question regarding a dye in radiology diagnostic test. Even that point I have discussed earlier, we call it as contrast injection. So in some situations, some cases it may lead to kidney injury. So as your creatine is 1.3, it's in the borderline range. In such a case, what we will do is, if possible, we will avoid giving that injection, that dye. So we will try to see whether we can get adequate information from a plain CT scan without giving injection. If that is not possible, if contrast injection is mandatory, what we will do is we will ask the person to drink a lot of water or if the patient is admitted in hospital, we will give IV fluids. So we will hydrate them before doing the contrast injection, before giving the contrast injection. So once we hydrate them, then we can proceed even with 1.3. So 90% of the times they will get out when kidney will be saved. So we should take certain precautions like this. Thank you, Doctor. Doctor, does AKI uh, leads to chronic kidney disease? Mm, that's a good question. Okay, see, as I have said earlier, acute kidney injury is a reversible one. As I have said earlier, if you like remember it. So once we do proper treatment, once the infection comes down, okay, so there is a good chance that it will recover. But Studies from the recent two to three years, what they have shown is acute kidney injury can lead to chronic kidney disease. That means not all patients will recover from acute kidney injury. As I said, some 10 to 15 percent of the patients, they may have creatinine in the higher range and it will not come back to a normal. So once three months is crossed, that's the time duration to label it as CK. So they may land up in chronic kidney disease. So this is a very important point. So even after recovering from acute kidney injury, we should be under close follow-up with a nephrologist. Thank you, doctor. Do we need a follow-up after recovering from acute? Yes, in continuation to the previous question, follow-up is definitely recommended after recovery from acute kidney injury. So let us take, for example, a person who is admitted in the hospital, developed kidney injury, is treated, creatinine came back to normal came back to 1.0, he is discharged. So we will again ask them to come for follow up at least once in the three months after discharge. Then we will assess his urine protein, is there any protein leak in urine. So we will repeat his serum creatinine and see how is it, is there any uh, problem with his urine output, is there any problem, any other symptoms of kidney disease are there. So we will assess in a proper way and we will see, we will ensure that everything is okay. So follow up is definitely required because out of people, like 100 people who develop acute kidney injury, some studies show that almost 25% of them, they are likely to land up in chronic kidney disease at a later stage. So once follow up is ensured, we will see, suppose even if the person lands up in CKD, 
since they are on regular follow up we can identify them early and we can take adequate measures at an early stage thank you doctor thank you for enlightening us regarding acute kidney injury and thank you viewers for watching us in case of any emergency please call to our emergency helpline number that is 10661066 and stay home stay safe thank you thank you thank you have a good day